hello and welcome if you're new to my channel and if you're a subscriber a warm welcome back this video is part of the viewer comment response series where i respond to a comment made by a viewer against one of my videos and the particular comment for this video goes as follows thank you for this beautiful and informative video thank you for watching annette I was touched by these beautiful pieces of art, especially Lana Marks and Kumi. Of course, Hermes is the top quality brand, but I'd rather buy one of these outstanding and original art bags if I had the money. After reading this comment, and more so when I got to the bit where it says, of course, Hermes is the top quality brand, I literally forgot everything else in the comment and zoned in just on those few words. And I started tapping away furiously in the comment section and then realized as it got longer and longer that a lot of what I was saying would be lost in translation. And I thought this is a natural segue for me to just talk about this whole concept, this whole expression. Hermes is the top quality brand because it's not the top quality brand. There are a number of other brands that are on par with Hermes and some are even better. And I'm talking the craftsmanship as opposed to the leathers. Leathers you will find most of the top brands source uh, from tanneries owned by Hermes. So they're all on par when it comes to the leathers. But the craftsmanship, uh, quite a few brands take it to the next level. Think, for example, Moina, that's just fractionally ahead of uh, Hermes, as I've said in the past. You also have Joseph Duclos. You also have Durette Paris that I've recently spoken about. And they are comfortably ahead of Hermes when it comes to the craftsmanship. You have on par Colombo. And I just thought, let me just talk about this and just explain why there is the assumption that sometimes because Hermes is typically the most expensive when it comes to handbags, there's the most coveted. Uh, people talk about them on social media and then that sometimes automatically translates to they are the top quality and just address a topic um, a concept in marketing called brand equity which is what it essentially boils down to and there are quite a few videos that talk about Hermes and uh, why are their bags their leather so expensive it all boils down to a concept called brand equity and that please don't feel I'm singling you out or um, it's a personal attack your comment was just the perfect uh, moment, opportunity for me to be able to just talk about Hermes's uh, brand equity because quite a few um, YouTubers, influencers are talking about Hermes. I'm Anasu Sagonda and I produce educational luxury content for anyone after the finer things, whether you're young and starting out in life and wanting to reap the benefits of buying quality from the get-go, or you're into luxury but you want to focus more on quality under the radar brands, or you're new to money and wanting to learn how to navigate the terrain, then my content is geared towards you. Soon after recording the intro, something came up and I had to stop recording. So I thought, let me take a break over the weekend and then I'll resume again uh, the following week. And then over the weekend, a couple of interesting developments arose that were relevant specifically to this video. The first, I received um, a DM from one of my subscribers and attached were two links to videos created by a YouTuber called Tanner Leatherstein, Leatherstein. My subscriber wanted to know, have I seen them? What do I think? What is he talking about? What is he referring to? One of the videos, um, he had bought a, a piece of leather from an Hermes owned tannery and the piece of leather was incredibly expensive. I think the most expensive he had ever paid. And it all boils down to um, Hermes and the premium they can put on top of their products. Boils down to brand equity. I'm going to include the links to both of those uh, shorts in the description box down below. And then the second development, um, on Friday, the Hermes finance chief, Eric Du Haluge, released uh, sales growth figures for the US market for Hermes, and they were up 23% above market expectations. Bearing in mind earlier on in the week, Louis Vuitton Moe Hennessy had released their US growth figures and they were up just 9%. And this is for the first quarter of the year. So that's January through to end of March. Hermes typically put up their prices uh, once a year, 2 to 3%, whereas this year they've put up their prices by 7% but their sales figures continue to go up and up. There's just no slowdown. And Hermes are pretty much leveraging off 
how hugely desirable the brand is and coupled with the fact that they have a number of iconic products with waiting lists so when those products become available people buy the products and what also helps Hermes is the fact that their pieces are timeless. They don't age. Uh, they have, um, at the moment, an older audience who are wealthy buying their products after pieces that don't age. They transcend um, the test of time, but more so they are very well made from high quality materials and um, they look good. So they're pretty much getting the best of both worlds. But why Hermes, um, amidst the, the current economic uh, instability, uh, rising prices everywhere, they are still continuing to outperform the market, exceed market expectations. And that boils down to this whole marketing concept of brand equity that I would like to address in this video. What is brand equity? Well, it's the added premium, the added price that can be added on to the products um, based on what is perceived, what is thought to be the value, the worth of the brand. And that is calculated using four core variables. The consumer's perception of the quality of the products, their awareness, their association, their loyalty to the brand. If those variables are said to be high or positive, then the brand is said to have um, high brand equity. And therefore, you can add an additional premium price uh, to the products because the brand is said to be of value it's worth it but you can also have the inverse where low or negative and therefore uh, less or uh, no additional premium or price uh, can be added or a lower amount can be added because um, there isn't enough awareness association perception of quality for example to warrant the additional premium but looking at those four core uh, variables in relation to Hermes. Well, firstly, the consumer's um, association uh, with Hermes. Um, it's a brand that people associate with prestige, with status, with wealth, with heritage. It's a brand that was founded in 1837. So it has the heritage, um, it has the experience, it has the exposure. Luxury is very much about an identity and people buy uh, luxury because they want to identify with whatever that brand stands for, what it signifies, what it means, what it says about you. They want to be associated with all of that. The awareness of the brand, the customer's awareness. Um, Hermes, like brands such as um, the biggest luxury group, Louis Vuitton, Moe Hennessy, Caring, Richemont, for example, they literally have bottomless pits of money that they spend on marketing, on promoting, on raising the profile of products of their brands within the group, Hermes as a whole. Um, some of the games they've created where they have created hugely iconic products. Think of the Birkin, the Kelly, the Constance, for example. And then in tandem with the waiting lists or the games where you have to spend a certain amount of money in order to qualify to buy the products or to be offered the products or to be considered to buy the products. Um, consumers buy into all of that hype. The fact that they are one of the few who have their iconic products. They're able to talk about their experience, regale the story of how they queued or how they waited or the game they had to play or what they had to go through in order to attain one of the hugely iconic, high status, high profile, iconic products. Hermes also sponsor a number of high profile sporting events within the horse racing industry. That has created a lot of awareness of Hermes. Uh, when it comes to consumer loyalty, it's very much a case of either buy into Hermes because you buy into the timeless aesthetic of their, their, their products, the quality, the craftsmanship. And once you start, it's addictive because you appreciate the quality, the benefits of it, and you keep buying. Or you want to be offered the iconic products. You want to be seen to be someone who can afford it. And so you keep going and you, 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 you become loyal to the brand to participate in the games or because you like the fact that it's timeless, it's quality. It just depends very much on the consumer, but their products um, dictate, they command a lot of loyalty once you start dabbling in them, depending on what has attracted you to the brand. And then of course, the perception of quality. 
Hermes own a number of tanneries that I've spoken about. Tanneries at the top end, they uh, pretty much dominate the space where they get access to the very best hides in the market and they process them and use them for themselves as a brand. And whatever's left over, they sell to other brands or people are able to come in and buy. But you are their tanneries are opening up access to the very best leathers which they are known for using and in turn selling so anyone who buys into them knows they're getting the very best um, coupled with the craftsmanship they have artisans they've worked with for many years who are highly skilled at producing bags the clothes they work with mills around the world who weave some of the most exquisite fabrics for their products Whichever suppliers they work with, they're typically the very best and therefore they're able to ensure they're, they're working with the best quality materials to begin with, coupled with exceptional craftsmanship, and they're producing some of the best products in the market. So when you look at Hermes in its entirety, consumer awareness, association, the loyalty, their perception of quality is incredibly high and therefore Hermes has very high, very positive brand equity. Case in point, just recently, um, the, the finance chief noted that the brand had exceeded uh, market expectations when it came to their U.S. sales growth, 23% above market expectations. Uh, they put up their prices 7% instead of the usual 2 to 3% a year, and people are still continuing to buy. And that is a testament to their very positive brand equity, where consumers have very high regard, they value the brand, and they think it's worth the premium that the brand puts on their products year in year out and even when they're doubling that premium which then brings us to the comment that started this video of course Hermes is the best quality and I jumped in and said it's not the best there are other brands out there that are just as good and some are even better and why I say this is because Hermes is um, a significantly bigger operation when you compare to some of the brands I've spoken about, Joseph Duclos, Moina, uh, Colombo, for example, just to name a few. And then most recently, Joseph Duclos, that's focused uh, very much on, on custom pieces. They are outfits that are much smaller. They are sourcing their materials from the tanneries owned by Hermes. So they're starting off with the very best quality materials. But their craftsmanship, as I've mentioned, Joseph Duclos, um, you have Durette Paris, it exceeds Hermes. But because they're smaller outfits, they don't have the deep pockets in order to promote and market their products. People don't know them, don't know of their brands, don't know of their products. And therefore, people uh, are more likely to have seen or heard of Hermes, whether it's social media, print media. Um, they've been to events sponsored by Hermes they will know of them and therefore are more inclined to go for their products because they're the ones they know they've been promoted to them they know about the games they know about the iconic products but people don't typically know about joseph duclos or uh, durette paris or Dal uh, dalvo is starting to to raise its profile but some of the brands that i talk about people don't typically know about them because they don't have the money to invest in the marketing to raise their profile and that's why i came in and said there are other brands out there if you are interested in same quality leathers as hermes but you want even better craftsmanship at a fraction of the price and you're not beholden to the label the identity that goes with hermes then there are amazing brands out there for you to consider and hence i chimed in with my comment but Hermes's quality is is exceptional it's absolutely fantastic they're a big operation with the money to promote their products their craftsmanship as i've said um, there's a video i'm going to attach when it comes out it might come out before or after this video i'm not too sure where i talk about uh, delvo's new bag the lingo and this the craftsmanship of the lingo is superior to the ruli from Hermes. But it's something that people won't necessarily pick up on or be aware of or may even believe until they see it with their own eyes because the assumption is that Hermes is the very best. But I'm here to dispel that myth and say Hermes is amazing. The quality, the craftsmanship is phenomenal. But there are other brands for you to consider if you're willing to forgo being part of the allure, the hype, the appeal that is Hermes. But any other questions, any thoughts, please let me know as always in the comments down below. Um, please do subscribe so you don't miss out. I'd love for this to be an ongoing discussion. And of course, to all my other subscribers and viewers, thank you for watching. And I look forward to seeing you all again soon.